Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Design with Ruzbeth. Continuing with CSWA practice problems, today we'll work on question 3.3. Let's take a look at this question. So in this question, unit of measurement is millimeter gram second. Like always, we need to ensure we are using the same unit of measurement in solid work setting. Now, looking at this geometry, this geometry is kind of similar to the gear geometry, and that's why I like these questions and specifically questions in chapter 3. It's basically similar to what we actually use in a real work problems. And here, in this example, we are dealing with a gear geometry. You can see the front view of the geometry. You can see the 3D model. We have section AA, and there are two details view. And in detail view B, you can see some dimensions related to the tooth. And also in detail C, you can see some dimensions related to the shaft diameter and also the key features. So with this introduction, let's jump into SOLIDWORKS and start modeling this part. In SOLIDWORKS, first thing first, we need to check unit of measurement. And as you can see, we have millimeter gram second, which is a correct unit of measurement. Now, in order to model this part or any complex part, um, you can start from different features. You can start from the shaft diameter, you can start from the teeth. So it really depends on you and your preference. Here, I'm just gonna present one approach in a way that I think is best to model this part. So let's start modeling this part. To do this, click on a sketch, click on a sketch command, and I'm gonna choose front plane. I wanna ignore the teeth part of the geometry. I'll deal, deal with that later. So what I wanna do, first I wanna have a general cylinder, just a cylinder of a base of the geometry. So let's click on circle command and then here I'm going to make a circle. Now looking at section AA you can see the diameter of the geometry is 108 millimeter. However if you ignore the teeth part you need to subtract 12 millimeter from that number because the height of the tooth is 6 millimeters you have two tooth which means that basically you have to subtract 12 millimeters. So what I can do here I click on a smart dimension and for the diameter I'm gonna have 108 minus 12 millimeter which is 96 millimeter so that's a base of the geometry let's extrude this part click on a feature click on extruded bus and then here you can have the option to use a uh, blind but I'm gonna change that to mid plane okay and then for the overall thickness I'm gonna choose 18 millimeter I understand that we don't have a, consistent thickness across this geometry but for now I want to start with the largest thickness which is 18 millimeter click on OK and that's it okay next I want to focus on the shaft part of the geometry so let's click on a sketch click on a sketch command and then here I'm gonna choose the front plane and then here I need a circle for the shaft so click on circle command and then this is the circle that I need okay Looking at detail C, you can see the radius of this circle. The radius is 8 mm, which means that the diameter should be 16 mm. Click on the smart dimension, click on the circle, and this should be 16. We also need to add key features. To do this, click on line command. But before that, let's click on the drop down menu and choose center line. Then I'm going to make this because I want to use this center line as a symmetry line. Okay? Click on line command. And then here I'm gonna make a geometry like this okay first of all we want this geometry to be symmetric so I click on the left line hold control click on center line hold control click on the right line and I click on symmetric the width of this key feature should be three millimeters so click on a smart dimension and this is three and also the distance between the top line and the center point should be 10 millimeters okay and that's it okay so now we have the 2d sketch click on feature go to extruded cut and then choose the contour contour number one contour number two and then yeah you can use blind 18 millimeter or you can change it to through all to make sure that it's cutting your geometry click on OK and now we have the shaft part kind of simulated here okay next step if you look at section AA, you can see that there is a recess in a geometry. As I mentioned, the wall thickness in this geometry is not consistent. It's not 18 millimeters. So we need to make that recess in our geometry. So let's make that part. To do this, click on a sketch, 
click on the sketch command and I'm going to choose the front surface okay now the recess area is bounded by two circles let's make those circles click on circle command and then I'm gonna have the first circle and the second one is also like this okay if you look at detail C you can see that the radius of this circle is defined the radius of the circle is 14 millimeter, which means that the diameter should be 28. So I click on a smart dimension, and then this should be 28. For this circle, if you look at front view, you can see that the distance between this circle and the outer edge is 6 millimeters. So I can choose, sorry, it should be 6.5. So I type 6.5, and that's it. Okay, so now we have these two circles. We know that this is a recess area. So we can go to feature, click on extruded cut, and this contour is selected. We don't want it to be through all, so change it to blind, and then here for the recess depth, we need one millimeter. Click on OK, and that's it. And now you can see we have that recess area. Okay, so now we have the recess area created here, and that's awesome. The only problem is that we only have it on a front surface we need to make it on a back surface as well so what we can do we can use mirror command from feature you can click on mirror command and then here I need to choose the face mirror face basically so click on this model tree and I'm gonna choose front plane okay secondary mirror face we don't need that click on feature and I'm gonna choose cut extrude number two and you can see the preview click on OK and that's it so now we have the recess on both sides. Awesome. Next, I want to focus on a cutout in a recess area. As you can see in a geometry, there are eight cutouts or windows in this geometry, and they're all placed in a recess area. So let's make one sketch, 2D sketch, make that cutout, and then we can use circular pattern to make eight features, okay? So to do this, click on a sketch, click on a sketch command, and then I'm gonna choose this recess area. Because we have eight features, and because we know that a circle is 360 degree, if you divide 360 by eight, you're gonna get 45 degree. So the angle between these features is 45 degree. So what I can do, I can click on line command and choose center line, and I'm gonna make one center line here, and a second one here. And the angle between these two must be 45. So Click on a smart dimension, and this angle should be 45. Awesome. Now, the area, the cutout area, let's call them window, is bounded from four different directions, right? The bottom and the top is part of the circle. So we need to draw those circles. Click on circle command, and this is the first circle. If you look at front view, you can see that the distance between this circle and the inner circle is 2.5 millimeters. So click on a smart dimension, and this distance should be 2.5. We need another circle, which is this one, and the distance between the circle and this circle should be 2.5 as well. Okay. Also, we need two walls, right? So let's click on line. And then I'm going to make one line here, and I'm going to make the second one here, okay? First of all, this line and this line should be parallel. So I click on the line, hold control, click on the second one, and I'm going to choose the parallel relationship, okay? These two are already parallel because both of them are vertical, so we don't need to worry about that. Now, about the distance, we know that the width of the wall is five millimeter according to the geometry if you look at the front view you can see that the width is five millimeter that means the half of the width should be 2.5 millimeter so i click on a smart dimension and i start dimensioning this this distance should be 2.5 and this distance should be 2.5 okay so now we have the area that we want. This is the area, basically. And we need to use extruded cut feature to make cutout. So click on feature, click on extruded cut, and then choose this area, okay? 
and we want this to be uh, 18 millimeter all the way to the back surface so change it to through all and then click on OK and that's the feature we are looking for okay now if you look at the front view or the 3d model you notice that there is a fillet radius in these corners on the front view you can see that number the radius is 2 millimeters so what I can do from feature I'm gonna click on fillet command and I'm gonna change this to 2 millimeter okay and let's click on these corners and select those fillet okay so now we have these four corners selected click on OK and that's a feature we want awesome so now all we need to do is making a pattern from this we need seven more so from feature tab click on linear pattern drop down menu and then choose circular pattern and then here first you need to choose a circle or direction I choose this circle then we don't need 24 change it to 8 and click on a feature we have the fillet already selected but we need the cutout as well so select cut extrude number 3 click on OK and now we have the features created awesome so everything is okay everything is going well next step is adding the teeth so let's focus on that part click on a sketch click on a sketch command and then here I'm gonna choose front plane here first I want to draw a symmetry line so what I can do I can click on center line and then I'm gonna draw a line from here to top okay now this is really important if you look at detail B you can see the distance between the top edge of the tooth and a bottom surface is defined and that's six millimeter you know although it seems like that the top edge is a line but it's not actually a line because you can't define the distance between a line and a circle the top edge is actually a circle and that's why you get consistent wall thickness which is six millimeter right so what we need to do we need to click on circle command and then make a circle and the distance between this circle and the outer edge should be six millimeter I've seen some people that they actually draw a line for the top edge because when you're looking at the geometry and detail B it seems like that you have a line but it's not actually a line it's an arc shape but because you have a large radius it's not really easy to determine it's with your eyes that it's actually a line or a circle but because the distance is defined that six millimeter you know that the, that distance is defined and it's consistent because you have circle to circle distance so you need to draw a circle okay so now I have this circle this is defining the top edge of the tooth next I click on a line and then I'm gonna make a line like this and a line like this okay these lines they, sh they should be symmetric so I click on the first one hold control click on the center line click on a right one and then from the options I'm gonna choose symmetric the angle between the lines should be 40 degrees so I click on a smart dimension I click on these two lines and the angle should be 40 also the distance between the left point and the right point is defined and that should be four millimeters so I click on a smart dimension click on this point click on this point and the distance should be four millimeter okay great now you have the tooth geometry it's just we don't have the bottom line right because we already have the feature you can convert it simply to a line you can use convert entities click on it select on this line and then click on OK and now you have the line okay let's clean up this geometry click on trim entities I'm gonna remove this side I'm gonna remove this and now you can see the sketch for the tooth click on OK click on feature and then use extruded bus okay for the options I want to use mid plane because I use the front plane to draw my geometry okay and the overall width of this geometry should be 14 millimeter why because if you look at section AA you can see that the distance between the front surface of the tooth 
and the front surface of the gear is 2 mm on both sides. And we know that the overall thickness is 18 mm. If you subtract 4 mm from 18, you're going to get 14. So this should be 14. Click on OK, and that's it. So that's the tooth geometry. Now we need 23 more of this geometry. So what we can do from the feature tab, you can click on linear pattern drop down menu and then click on circular pattern. And then here, choose the edge, change the quantity to 24. And for the feature, you can click on this model tree and use extruded bus. And you can see the preview. Click on OK and that's it. Okay, awesome. So this is the final geometry. Uh, it's time to check the total volume and make sure this is actually correct. So let's go back to the question and see the total volume. In the question, you can see the total volume, which is 81,601 cubic millimeters. Let's go back to SOLIDWORKS and see if we got the same answer or not. In SOLIDWORKS, in order to check the total volume, you can click on Evaluate tab, click on Mass Properties, and here you can see the total volume. The total volume is 81,600 cubic millimeters. If you round up this number, you're going to get exactly the same number as shown in a question, which is showing our model is correct and accurate. Okay, awesome. Uh, I think that's a wrap for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or feedback, please leave comments down below. Thanks again for watching. My name is Ruzbe. Hope to see you again soon in the next videos.